Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, a little bit disconcerting doing this without any feedback, so I'm hoping that everybody can hear me. Uh, so it's just on 10 o'clock now, so we'll make a start on this uh, presentation on K-Mobile and k software thoughts on the drainage industry. So this is based on, the, the, for those of you not familiar, K-Mobile and k -Matic. We we'll do a lot. We have lots of customers who work in the drainage area. Uh, and what we've, for, for the numerous requests that, that have been, that have come up over the last couple of years, uh, we've put together an addition to the software now that is focused on drainage collection and some of the ways that we think the drainage industry is going. So. Uh, I'm going to start off with a short presentation and then do a little bit of a, a, a live demonstration of K-Mobile interacting with the portal and what some of the nice stuff that we can do with that, uh, especially some of the stuff, the nice new stuff around point clouds and integrating them into the into the a, a standard workflow so that anybody can do this now. You don't need to be a, you know, a highly specialist uh, surveyor to, to generate point clouds now. Uh, so, if there are any questions, can you please just pop them into the, the chat window and we'll address them at the end. Uh, and then we'll uh, make a start. Okay, so for those of you not familiar, Pinematic is the software development division for the Coric Group. So, Corics mainly sell the, the Trimble hardware. Obviously, they're now doing the GeoSlam for the, the handheld laser scanning and the Sensify stuff. And we quite often take a little bit of uh, a piece of hardware from each of those manufacturers and bring them together into a complete solution that works for specific customers. We're very much about tailoring a solution to meet a specific customer's requirements rather than offering a, uh, a wide ranging off the shelf product that will suit everybody. In order to, to put those platforms together, to put those solutions together, we have uh, at our disposal three main platforms. So we have the K Mobile, which is the, uh, the handheld data capture device, works on Android and uh, Windows and Windows Mobile, soon to be iOS as well, which will be early next year. Uh, K Console, which is the desktop companion and back, background integration tool. So we, we use console where we need to do some deep integration. So if you want, if you've got backend servers that have got SQL or Oracle or Esri installed on them, and you want the data to flow directly from the field straight into those GISs or backend databases, then we can use the console installed locally on inside your infrastructure to facilitate that. But most of the work nowadays is done through the portal, which is a completely hosted solution. It provides uh, work order management and operationals visibility so that you can see how much work has been done, whether that's on a particular on a daily basis or whether it's on a, a project wide basis, as well as being able to interact with the data on a, a nice, easy map uh, and download that for download and report on it for end, re, end client reports or taking the data manually out of the system and feeding it into a GIS. Uh, through file transfer rather than as an automated link. And we, the, the K-Mobile and K-Portal are a general purpose product. You can buy them and, and just go out and do your own thing. But we do have some uh, market-specific solutions around green management. So, so that's very much around workflow, work, work order management, being able to package a set of data up and send it out for somebody to do some work on it and monitor that work as it's been going as it's going on live in the field. Uh, very similar routines for routine sign inspection and utility poles. The market specific side of them is that because those solutions come with some preset forms so that you're ready to go out the box and some industry standard reports. The drainage survey one that we're going to go through in a bit more detail today and a similar one on invasive species monitoring. Big in, big in island on the uh, Japanese artwork where they are trying to uh, control the uh, the species invasion, but not so big in the UK where we just seem to have given up and, and accepted that Japanese knotweed is everywhere. So 
But the first thing I'm going to show is uh, not to spend too long on these presentations, so we'll get through these as quick as we can do. But I just want to go through the presentation so that I get all the, all the important points across. So we've got K-Mobile. This is it running on a, uh, a Samsung device connected to a Catalyst receiver so that we can see there that K-Mobile supports a whole range of uh, devices and accuracy requirements. So th this is where we're connected. You can see on the front there that we're connected to a Catalyst receiver, which is this low-cost subscription-based service that enables you to... It's ideal for either enabling a large workforce where there was no, where there's no way that you could possibly afford to equip everybody with a centimeter-grade GPS device, or where, again, you have a, a decent-sized fleet who ideally want to capture some points to centimeter accuracy, but are not using it all day, every day. You know, so, so they're doing some work, and at the end of the day, they just want to capture a few points to high accuracy. Catalyst is perfect for that, that it, because, because it is this low-cost solution that can just be stuck in the glove compartment and pulled out when you need it. But we also connect to uh, the, the high accuracy survey work. Uh, so, so we will connect directly to some of the R2s and the R10s directly in K-Mobile so that you can perform the, this drainage work with real-time high accuracy uh, high accuracy GPS. And, and there are some options for post-processing that we'll cover in a bit as well. So it is a fully connected solution. So it works completely, it was designed as an offline, offline device. So it tends to be that all your work is, if you're being assigned work else, that is all allocated to the device first thing of the morning. Once you've received that, you can work for the rest of the day offline. And then as soon as you return to a, an, an area where you've got coverage, all that data that you've collected just seamlessly flows back into the portal. Of course, if you happen to be working in an area where you've got 4G coverage for the whole day or 3G coverage for the whole day, then that then the, the office will be seeing live updates. And the office can also see when you are out of service as well. So they, they, they can they can see if there's a break in the data that why you're not in the data because you haven't been in the area of coverage for, for, for a couple of hours. So we have asset capture and inspection modes. Very minor changes to the workflow for those two things. Uh, the, the capture is focused purely on capturing data from, from a blank piece of paper. The inspection is where data is being sent out to you. So the, the, the changes tend to be the, the points disappear once they've been inspected or, or are hidden once they've been inspected. Uh, and we'll give you some metrics on how far to a job you are because we know how big the job is. We don't know that when you're doing pure capture. All our data goes through the, the, the uh, the, 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 the best of breed in, in servers. So we, we only use Amazon and uh, Microsoft for our cloud servers. So, so these, we, we use Amazon because when we started off this, they, they were offering the highest uh, high availability cloud transfer. So we could have we could have 20,000 devices all deciding to sync data at the same time and Amazon copes with that no problems at all. Uh, nowadays, most of, most of our storage is done on Azure. So uh, the, the, the data goes from the Amazon servers into the Microsoft Azure cloud, where Microsoft take care of all the uh, the backups and data replication. It takes a by no means a cheaper solution, but it takes a, a, a lot of headache off of us and gives a lot of confidence to our customers that there's there's no danger of their data uh, ever dis just disappearing or being uh, stolen. Then inside the mobile software assembly itself, we've got very sophisticated rules for, for setting up the data capture. So we can set up things like uh, photographs. So maybe you're taking single photos where you can say, take a location photo, take a, a detailed photo, uh, take a photo north, south, east, and west if necessary. And then each of those photos can be manually marked up, but it can also have a watermark applied to it. So the date, date and location stamps are stamp onto the photo, make them absolutely ideal for evidence-based capture that you need to prove that you were there at this time. Uh, also supports signature and sketches capture, and uh, well, obviously it supports the, the manual text and numeric entry, but we do try to limit that as much as possible through the use of uh, lists and nested lists to try to get as much of the data entry as just being a single click and only resort into the keyboard, we actually have to. 
uh, Gate Manager will also has a uh, pin entry authorization. So, so we have two methods of doing this where we can, uh, when as you go to start the software, it can force you to enter a pin number, or we can have the NFC chip reader, which is a little keyring mounted chip, very, very cheap. Uh, giving amount of chip that whenever you pick up your device, you need to put your device to your chip to log you in. Now, this isn't really to, uh, it's not for a, a great data security protection mechanism, this. It, it, it's more so that you can be, because every record that you capture is being stamped with the name of the person who's, who's logged into the device, this is a way of absolutely enforcing that the person hasn't just picked up the device and is using it while he's logged in as somebody else. They have to have logged in under their own name, either with their PIN number or their chip name. So you've got absolute traceability of who recorded each point. And then we've also got a range of external accessories that we support now via Bluetooth. And this is growing as and when these requirements come up. So we've already got built in routines to connect with the the ground utility detectors, the RD8000, that's that type of thing. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, Bluetooth connections to barcode readers and RFID readers and external cameras as well. So, uh, you know, a lot of the Android devices now come with very good cameras. But if you need to be taking, sometimes, some, strictly in the drainage industry, they want to be taking photos down very dark, uh, deep chambers. So, uh, We've got some links there that will work with some of these Wi-Fi enabled cameras so that you can have a good quality SLR camera that's taking your photos and is just wirelessly seeming them into the software and they are as integrated as if you're taking a snap on the device itself. They, they flow back, automatically connected to the manhole, the pipe that they were meant to be attached to. It's, it's absolutely seamless using an external camera on the Android version of K-Mobile. Okay, a few more of the, the nice bits, the, 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 the nice bits of K Mobile. Because we, we do have the ability to connect to high accuracy GPS now, and, as, and especially when we're recording underground utilities, the ability to navigate back to one of those points to centimeter accuracy and know that when you're, that it will give you good feedback to show you you are actually standing over the point that you you previously captured. So, you know, a bit unusual in terms, in terms of an Android device to have that level of uh, navigation built into it, but K-Mobile does. And it also has the, the turn by turn as well. So if you, if you are told to go and do a piece of work that's 20 miles away, it's, 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 it's not groundbreaking, but it just makes it easier that all those points that you've got loaded into your K-Mobile, you can click on any one of those points and say, navigate me here by Google Maps. And it will then be, give the turn by turn navigation, including all the, uh, the, the the fastest way due to road conditions. Nothing that you couldn't have done manually, it just makes it a lot easier because the, all of those points are there and, and navigatable at the touch of a button rather than having to copy and paste that longs. Uh, and we also have some, some nice features on the automated exception emails. So the, the, if you were to record out in the field that a critical failure of some part of the system, we can have the, the form set up that they will instantaneously send an email to whoever needs to know about it. And then there's a wide, wide range of background map support as well. So, so we, do have, we do have our own mapping service that includes all the Ordnance Survey open data formats that can be streamed to any device. We also have on our server all the master map for the whole of the country. So as long as you have a, a either an agreement directly with Ordin Survey or an agreement, if you're working as a subcontractor for a, 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 an organization that does have a master map license, then you can use our version of the hosted master map service, which means that you get high quality, the best background maps there is, delivered to the device without any work on your part. It's a massive time saving in not having to worry about converting background maps for your own fleet of devices. And then, and then we've got some advanced editing functionality for the, uh, around the drainage area specifically. So we've, the way that we will go into this uh, a bit later on is that we'll be showing the point to point and, and captain mode where 
the, the way that we like to be able to, be able to work uh, on the drainage side is that we call all the manholes with the GPS that will automatically tag all the, 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 those cover levels. And then you join your manholes up with uh, dot to dot picks on the manholes to say that there's a pipe that goes from there to there. And then you fill in the attributes about the pipe. We'll see that in a lot of detail later on. So, so the, 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 the last screen on the game over there is that that's what the process can be. You know, it can be as simple as one, two, three. You, you're on your map, you click your record point, you fill in your form, you take your photograph, you maybe add a bit of markup on it. You click record, and that's that point recorded. And like, hey, really, anybody can use this device. You know, anybody who can use a mobile phone can, can now do uh, high quality data capture. And then on moving over onto the portal side of things, the, the, so this is a completely hosted service. So there's no IT in, involvement in this. Uh, this is all hosted on our Azure servers. You just get a login to a portal. You can so securely log in. You can see all the data that you've got and download what you need to. There's no, there's no uh, holding of the data. If you need to get all the photos that you've taken downloaded, then we can do that. Uh, but the, the portal is ideal for the operational management side of things. So as well as seeing the data coming in, you can also see how individual uh, how individual people are, are performing in terms of how much data they are actually capturing. But it also shows progress through a project. So this is very useful on some of the, the, the Gully projects where you know that you've got, uh, on the Gully ones, you, you might know that you've got 11,000 Gullies that need cleaning in the next six months. So you can just put a, a, a chart in there that gives you a line going from zero to 11,000, and then a bar chart that goes along that, show, showing you whether you are above or behind the schedule. Uh, the, the, the portal also allows for the form creation as well. So with, 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 a lot of our solutions come with some predefined forms, but you don't have to come back to us. This is a, a major feature of our software, that you don't have to come back to us in order to Make, addition, make alterations to those forms. If you want to take some features away or add some additional questions to the form, you can do that through the portal without any involvement from us. And it's very easy to do as well. You don't, you don't need to, it, it's not a, it's not, it's not, it's not a, a time consuming process to do that. Uh, the, the portal has a number of role-based uh, features. So, so that when you create a user, you give them a role and that role will identify what, what features they, they, they have access to. So our normal ones is that you have an admin and office and maybe a client uh, view as well, so that you can have your admins are the people who do all your user management and set up your forms. The office users are the people who allocate workouts and maybe did the, the reporting and the downloading. Uh, and the, the, the client view, you may give them restricted access so that they can see some dashboards, but not all of them. And some ma some maps so they can see the progress of what's going on uh, on a on a on a on a, on a project-wide scale, but maybe not give them some of the views that will allow them to see well what's happened today. You know, so sometimes some of the subcontractors don't want that level of visibility go going to the directly to the end client because the end client will be on the phone every day saying, you know, it, it's half past ten. Why aren't you why aren't you out in the field collecting data? Uh, yes. So for the, the, the operation side of it, you can use this for job management, so you're allocating workouts. Now that can be work where you've got data in the portal that you're saying, I want to go and re do, do some work around this area. It may just be a, a, a blank job where you just pick that location and say, just go and do, we're going to we're going to do a manhole survey at this site. And you can just go and select on the map where the site is just to give the field user a clue about where he's going. And then he, he just gets the job, arrives on his device, he can click on the point, navigate to it, and he's, he's then at the site without anybody really having to speak to him. And then we have some options for doing daily summary emails as well. So that you don't, it can be that once the system is in place and flown well, you never need to log on to the portal. You just get your daily summary that just tells you, you had six people out in the field, they captured this much data, these are the serious problems they came across. And that can be issued just as an email that comes at nine o'clock every night. And then, yeah, we also use the, uh, the portal for doing the download and go reports 
and the bulk updates. So if you if you've got a big little bit that you want to insert into into the portal, you can you can do that through the portal. You don't again you don't need to come to us to do a lot of this background process. So most of most of the work on, on the portal is, is is done around the map. So it, it will give you the 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 in detail view that we've got down here. So you've got a, a, all your points being collected. You click on the dots. You see the attributes that the field users are filled in. You see any photographs that they've, that they've taken. You can begin to do some analysis as well. So you can set up different filters and different styles for how you want to show this. This one's showing uh, a breakdown of all the all the, all the, the gullies in an area that have been inspected, uh, uh, which have been agreed against all the ones that haven't, which are in red. So there's a, a number of processes there that allow you to, to do those filters. You can then download that. Once you've got a filter that's, that's, that's selected, maybe 100 or 200 features, you can then download that as a CSV, or you can reassign that back out. So if you need to do some rework, you can select some points here and just go, go and re, go and re level these points or, you know, or reposition these points. Yeah, and that, that could be, we can store as many photos as you like with each asset as well. So you can you can just uh, scroll through all the photos that were taken with each point. Maybe not so much for the drainage ones, but for, for, for some of the other assets that we do inspections for, you can keep a complete hist historical record of all the inspections that were performed on assets as well. So if you need to prove that you are regularly going out and inspecting something, you can have a record of every time that was visited. Uh, yeah, uh, there's also a couple of nice ones there for displaying where all your field users are at any one time and displaying a weather overlay. So if, you, if you're looking for when a, a big rain cloud may be coming in and you want to give the guys a bit of a break, you can see a massive storm coming in. Uh, and that's just, I mean, of course, you can go anywhere on the web and get that data, but you can get that from directly from the portal overlaid on where, you, where everybody is. So if the, cloud is just, if the rain is just going over the north, and all your five guys in the south, no excuses. Uh, the CCTV is something that we, we, we support if if you've got access to it. You know, we haven't got any special access there, but we, we have for a couple of customers, they've got uh, see access to CCTV cameras, and we can integrate that so, that so the CCTV cameras just appear as dots on the map. Quite nice to be able to click on those dots and get a live feed of what's happening at the moment. And then this is an important one for the uh, for the the drainage one is the inspection reports. So we'll do we'll do very specific reports that save hours in the office in, and these are completely automated, and and they, and they do save hours in in manually typing and transposing and copying and pasting of data. And then we'll just touch on this. We'll see a little bit of this as well. But the portal also works for the advanced solutions as well. So this is where we do quick clouds. Uh, these two are based off vehicle-based systems, but we'll touch on this a bit later. And we do imagery-based ones as well, where you can stick. Uh, we've, had, we've had quite a lot of interest actually in people doing. Uh, it's not quite drainage, but it's, it's doing the sort of fiber optic network surveys of using this as a, a, a potential solution. So this is where you, you use the, the Trimble MX7 vehicle-mounted system. It's pure imagery. This one, it's not a laser system. You drive the vehicle down the road, it captures thousands and thousands of photos, and then you can work your way through the photos, identify points, you can do as-built surveys, the accuracy is, is remarkably good. You can you can you know, mark out, you can do, where, where it's been used a lot in the fiber optic network uh, sphere is that they are doing pre-planning of where they're going to go. So the finding a chamber, the, 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 the noting down what surface go, is at, at the pavement level, whether it's grass or curbside, between two chambers, and then from that they can allocate the right people to go out and do the job of trying to get a piece of cable from here to there. Uh, and again, you know, the, the nice thing about having that integrated with K-Mobile is that once you've done a little bit of capture, you know, like we like to do down there at the bottom here, they're, they're identifying where these points are. They they are just features inside K-Portal that can be filtered and assigned out. So you can do a little bit of a, a sketch down the road. This is where I expect the, 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 a new pipeline to go. Uh, highlight all those points and then just sign them out, assign them out to a, a field user to go and actually lift the lids on these chambers, 
take photographs, take measurements of what's inside those chambers, and all that information just feeds back straight into the portal completely automatically. And we do that either as a piece of equipment, or the product do that either as a piece of equipment that can be purchased or as a service where they will just go and drive the road for you and, and deliver the imagery. That's great. Moving on to some of the specifics for uh, the drainage side of things. Now, again, I just want to quickly go through this just so that I can mention everything before I go on to the live side of it. So we have talked about all of this already. So on the, on the mobile side, we have links to the survey grade GPS. We also have workflows that, in where you're not connected, the device itself is not connected to a high accuracy device. So the, 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 there's a couple of customers who use the device as completely disconnected. They will just go around and do all the asset inventory stuff involved in the, in the manhole. So they'll be lifting the manhole, they'll be doing the measurements, but they're not responsible for getting the positions. They have a topo team who will go around and do that either with high accuracy GPS or even with a total station. And, and the people on to with the total station may be working at that point on a local grid. So, so you know, completely disconnected from the way that we want to be able to work in the field with live updates. But, the system, but we've, we've generated workflows that, that will work for that. So what you get in the field initially is accuracies in the range of four to five meters that you've captured with your, with your, Jeep, with your handheld device, just with your phone. Uh, but it still allows you to do all the connectivity. So you can say that manhole two links to manhole four, and these are the depths and these are the pipes. So all that nice, uh, nice capture side of things is still in place. It's just that your locations are not very good, which is not great for us because we do a lot of work on uh, where, where, we, where we're taking a cover level from a, a manhole and we're transposing that into the pipe form so that we can work out invert levels if all our levels are wrong, there's lots of calculations that are not accurate in the field, but it's the workflow that the customer is used to. It's, the, it's what they wanted. So we allow that to be captured. The data flows back to the portal, or you know, we, they, they get a view of some sort in the portal, but the points are not very accurate and all the levels are wrong. So they then go through a process. Their normal uh, existing workflow is to bring that total station data in, uh, transform it into a national grid system, do all the, 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 uh, the, the work that they need to get that in the right coordinates, and then they just export a, a, a correction file from the system into the portal, upload that to the portal, and then all our points move. So all the points move in Easting, Northern, and level, and all the calculations that were based off those levels all adjust so that you now have a nice, a, a nice plan with accurate levels. It, it, you know, for me, on the, the software side of it, 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 it may not seem the most efficient way of doing it. But if you've already got crews out there who are doing a, a topo survey anyway, and they are collecting more information, they're collecting all the, the care lines and the building outlines, if they're doing that, all that stuff anyway, it probably makes sense to have them capture the, the coordinates of the manholes accurately. And the guys who are coming down to do all the, the actual drainage side of things just concentrate on doing the drainage side of it. So, so that's our post-processed idea. So, so it also works with the, with the, 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 the idea if you've gone out with your GPS and you weren't, you weren't able to, to get a live uh, RTK positions in the field, you've always got the, it's nice to have that option that you can post-process this data, re-upload it into the portal, and there's a, there's a method already there for, for correcting all the data as a post-process. There's also the options for, uh, we, have the, we have the specialized trim the equipment for doing centimeter and decimeter surveys in a handheld piece of equipment. You know, it's, a, it's a great uh, device for doing this work because it is just a handheld device. You don't need to be, you don't, you don't need to have tripods or anything. You, you're just with a handheld device. We see getting centimeter positions. It, it's very good for the non-surveyors who you know come from a GIS background to be able to use that device and, and there's, there's nothing else to worry about. And the rugged devices that we do from Trimble have obviously got all those Trimble advantages of it's a device that has eight hours, 10 hours battery life. It's got an outdoor readable screen and it's got a high accuracy GPS. Whereas the next option is the 
a low cost solution where you're running off any and well any, you're running off an Android device. It needs to be a, a fairly if you want to use the catalyst size, it needs to be a fairly well specced modern phone. But if you if you're using it just as a as a uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an, a, an assistant to be able to capture this data, then it can be any phone that you can just be entering this data into. But to use it with Catalyst, which is the Trimble service where you get this high accuracy on a low cost, high accuracy positions on a low cost antenna, it does need to be a decent spec phone, but still it's only a phone. And that will enable you to, to take your Catalyst out the car, get high accuracy positions at very low cost, but, but it's not magic, you know. There are costs there. Although the hardware is uh, is exceptionally cheap, you know, it's only like three hundred pounds for an antenna. The subscription set, there is a subscription service that that that, that uh, is charged on a monthly basis for for what accuracy of data you actually require, and it's not a full day's working solution. You know, the the, the, the catalyst uses it can use an external battery, but it will also be powered from the phone. So you you you're probably only going to be getting three or four hours at, on a charge at most. So it's good for some operations, but it's not for the surveyor who's out there all day every day capturing points after points after points. So we uh, so move on to the next point. So the whole point of this is that we have the the out the box inspection forms for both SDC twenty five and for doing a more simplistic manhole inspection. So, so we, we'll, we'll see them in, in a minute uh, on the live side of it. And then, uh, the, yes, so, so the process that we, were, we, we described on, on the way that you would capture this little bit of a, a survey here is that you would GPS locate all the manholes. Uh, the, the software has got automatic naming conventions built into it. So once you, if you put in a bit of an ID and a bit of a number, it will then start auto recording from that number. Uh, it will also populate the cover level into, into one of the attributes. As much as what we can do is, is, is drop downs. I think virtually everything on the, the, the manhole form is a drop down, apart from a, a couple of, uh, of remark fields. But there's uh, options for also repeating certain fields or manually repeating. So if this manhole was exactly the same as the one you did previously, you can just hit a repeat and all your, your dimensions and that get copied through to the, the new form. But of course, all your photographs and your, your levels don't do. And there's options for uh, integrating the, the options for absolutely integrating the capture of photos into the workflow so that it, the software will stop and tell you to take photos at appropriate places and will give you the, give you in, uh, uh, instructions on what type of photograph to take. So whether you want to look you know, give me a general location of where the manhole is or give me a uh, Give me an, a, a, an, inter, a, a, an internal photo showing the, the structure of the, the pipes coming into the manhole. We do have a, a, a lot of users who struggle with their field users, you know, like, like on the, the pothole side of things, and they're asked to take a photograph of the pothole, and they come back with uh, 70 potholes, all with lovely photographs of potholes. But that's not what the user was after. The user was after, the, the, the office user was after a, a photograph showing how does, where does this pothole sit in relation to the road. Now, we know what a pothole looks like. We don't need 70 photos of them. We need to see where is that specific pothole sitting in relation to the rest of the road. But you can do that in K-Mobile. You can, you can identify so it's nicely. Uh, it, when the camera fo pops up, it, it's telling you what you want to be taking a photograph of. So on, on this one, we would, do, we, would man, we would GPS the manholes in, and then we would dot to dot the pipes. And it's a very nice snapping routine. You don't need to be too accurate with it. You know, at, that, at that sort of range, it's very, very easy, just with your finger to go, add a pipe from that manhole to that manhole, or from that manhole to that manhole. And if you don't know where the, where the pipe's going yet, if you haven't lifted this pipe and you don't know where it is, you can do partial ones. So you can do, I'm not sure where this pipe is coming in from, but there's a pipe coming in from this way, but I could just have added a pipe from here onto that one, and it would do the best it can do. It would leave all the upstream references blank, but fill in the downstream references. And if, if at a later stage you were to go in and say, okay, I now know where that manhole is, you can just go back to that pipe, pick it up, and re reconnect it, saying that, uh, that, okay, that end now snaps to that point. And then it will recalculate all the invert levels and the cover levels based off the new, the new information. 
So, so the, yeah. So, so that, that that's uh, so so on on the pipe side of things, we will also do automatic pipe naming as well. So, so same idea. You give your pipe a begin the, the, the number or a, a, a bit of a description of what you want your pipes to be, how they're going to be labelled, and it will just every pipe you put on there, it will just also increment the number. You can overtype it and put your own numbering in there, or and there will there's a warning if you if you if it comes across the, the an attempt to use the same ID twice, or it's a uh, but, but, but most people just start it off and let it be called on its own. And it, the, the, the big thing, the, the, the big productivity advantage of using this is that when I say I want to put a pipe in between that manhole and that manhole, it's snapped to those manholes. So, the, so that pipe starts exactly at that location and exactly at that location and ends at that location. And it also picks up the attributes of the IDs that it's snapped to. So it will pick up the upstream reference and the downstream reference and the upstream cover level and the downstream cover level. So all what you're left to do is enter the information in about the pipe so that you can, uh, you put the, the upstream depth in, you put the downstream depth in, and it will work out the invert levels. And the beauty about doing it this way of, as doing a connected survey as opposed to capturing everything about a dot on, just on a single manhole is as well as getting a nice network out of it that's very easy to, to visually identify that it looks correct. You're not having to double book all the pipe entries. It, you know, we've seen users who have set this up themselves and have just got a single STC 25 manhole point. And as part of that form, they will have all six incoming pipes and two outgoing pipes. So every single attribute that you need for the STC 25 form is filled in on that dot, which is, a, which is okay. It makes for quite a simple workflow, but it's a lot of data to enter in. And you're having to double book a lot of it because that that pipe is generally the same there as it is there. So when you come to do that manhole, you haven't to enter all that information in again. Where we know if you do the connective method, we know all the pipe parameters. So you, you, it's only a matter of entering that information in once. Uh, and we can provide some uh, uh, confirmation on the if we are using this in a live environment where we've got good accurate locations and levels. We can provide warnings if that you appear to have connected a upstream and a downstream that are flowing in the wrong direction. It doesn't, you don't need to take our word for it. You, know, you can override that. It's just a warning to say, this looks like it's flowing in the wrong direction. Are you sure you've got your upstream and downstream the right way around? Okay, then moving over onto the portal side. So standard mobile, pay mobile functionality, we have live office synchronization. So as you record the point in the field, 20 seconds later, the office can see that point being recorded. As you take the same with the photographs, as, you, as you're taking your photographs, they are just appearing in the portal. It, it's a very nice idea to have the portal just up on one of those big screens over your reception desk, and you can see, you can have the dash, it can toggle through all the dashboards showing you, you know, how, much, how much we've done today, uh, and toggling onto a map to show this is this this is the latest point that we captured. Uh, so so it will give the, the the project progress charts and the KPI dashboards. You can review and edit and view, review the photos on the portal. But the big thing comes on the automated report generation. So when you either finish your job on the mobile device, or you can manually kick off the process if the user forgets to finish the job or you want to generate some reports halfway through a job, you can, you can kick off the, the report generation uh, manually from the portal. But what you'll get then is one of these completed STC25 reports with all the manhole information, all the connected pipe information. I don't know if I can actually expand that one. I'm not sure how I can expand that one up, but uh, we'll, we'll see it in a bit. Uh, so you, you, a, a location plan is being automatically generated. This internal diagram is automatically generated based off the, the connectivity that you've done, that you've captured in the field. We are automatically generating that little sketch there. So that's another job that doesn't need to be done. We do have the facility to do a little sketch in the field so it can be used as a reference, but you, you don't need to, and you can, you can get very nice little sketches automatically generated and include all your photographs so that, that's all location photo and our internal photo. And you can sketch on top of the internal photo if you want to as well. 
and then the uh, so, so you know, the, 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 that is the, the, the big selling point of the system is that the, the, those you know, one of those reports is generated for every manhole that you've captured at the touch at the press of a button. It, it it does take a little bit of time to generate those reports, but it's completely automated. So you can have a whole a whole schema of of a, a, a few hundred manholes, and you once once the job has been finished, that those that report will just be automatically kicked off, and you'll get uh, on each one of these dots there will be an, an icon up here where you can review the completed STC twenty five report. The, the, and you can give access to your client, client to a portal so they can view, go in there and view and download the actual reports. Or you can just download that whole lot as a, either as a zip file where there's a separate report, there's a, there's a separate way. Of 200 pages with, with, with 200 pages of completed manhole forms. Uh, and if you need to do some tweaks, we, we have a, a, a workaround for that as well. So the, the very occasionally, uh, we, we've had some users who want to go and add a bit more information. Maybe they want to add in their own sketch here. Uh, so we, we've got an option where the, the, you can download a whole job's worth of reports, open them all up, do any last minute tweaks you want to, and then re-upload them back to the portal so the client can so your client can still log in there and see your edited versions of those reports as well. Which is another thing that's it, it's quite unusual that on a, a hosted solution to allow the you know, to download those reports, make any any last minute tweaks to them, and re-upload them so your client can see them. Uh, so so uh, yeah, a, a, a great part of the the, the the asset system is being able to share that with your with your end clients at, at whatever stage you want to live. Uh, it, it can save a, a little load of work if you don't if you no longer have to provide weekly upload weekly updates to your clients on how how the work is progressing. They can just log into the portal and see it. And then the the, the portal also provides a, a a range of export options for getting the data house as well. So we've got the the shape files, yeah, the box and the shape files for going into your entry systems, the QGIS. It is really nice. Actually, I've got an example of uh, of showing that QGIS data. Uh, if, if any of the subcontractors out there are collecting this type of data but not actually loading it into a GIS, QGIS is a great way of doing this. It's free. We we have an optimized export from the portal that you can just drop into QGIS and you get a lovely uh, a, 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 a lovely drawing inside a proper GIS that you can then you can drop you can you can customize to your heart's content you know you, you can add in all the annotations so that you're you're describing you're putting uh, the the pipe materials and the pipe diameters can be can be highlighted can be annotated along the manhole along the pipes it's got text overwriting rules so that it will move text around to stop it from getting too cluttered it's a really great tool for for being able to produce real high quality exports and by export, I mean it. You no, know, it can just be a 2D plan where somebody's put a title block around it uh, and delivering the drawing to the user. But they are really high quality reports that you don't need to have uh, AutoCAD or an, another GIS for, do, for, for, for generating. And then the other one that's very nice is the KML as well. Which we'll show an example of that as well. Very, very quick and easy to get a KML export, but it looks great inside the new Google Earth. And then the the, uh, the, fact, the final thing I was going to go through uh, was the the point five integration. So this 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 is this come from a couple of a couple of customers have asked about three D scanning of manholes. So this is where we are, uh, as well as doing all the standard man, the manhole functions of being able to measure the depth and all that. They are sticking a, a, a handheld laser scanner down the chamber and getting a full scan of the of the portal uh, of the of the the chamber itself to, 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 to really good accuracies. You know, on this one, I'm not entirely sure what type of chamber this was, but they are seeing all the tree roots that's being that's being uh, growing into the chamber. And it, it is the, the point we've, we've had point cloud the ability to collect point clouds for a few years now, but the problem has always been how do you deliver that to the customer? The files tend to be enormous, 
the, 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 you need high spec PCs to be able to to manage them, and you need specialist software to be able to to be able to do anything with them. The portal sorts that all out. The, the, when we when we combine this with uh, the GeoSlam, the the you, you'll just take, as long as you get your your name information right, as you survey Manhole Two, you do a GeoSlam on Manhole Two. This is the, the things just work together, and you get a, an extra uh, icon on your form that will allow you to log on to the uh, open up the, the the point cloud, spin it around. And, and that's all done completely automatically, so, the, so the, you don't need to do anything other than just make, make sure that the, the last file from the GeoSlam is put in a folder on your PC, and the, the rest of the process is automated. You know, it goes through the conversion, it uploads it to our server, and then your clients can, can view this through the browser, requiring, uh, you know, I'm just doing this on my laptop over, a, you know, quite often I do it over a, a, a mobile phone. Uh, Data connection, so it's not heavy on data. It's and it doesn't require a high spec PC. And anybody can spin these clouds round and, and to take measurements and cut them. We are. We, 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 uh, Coric have just bought a uh, one of these Microsoft Hololens headsets, and one of the next things that we're going to be looking at is how we can get that that, that scan of a chamber floating in the middle of the room. You know, maybe at you know one to one scale, so it's just floating in the middle of the room, and you can just walk up to it and stick your head inside and have a look around. So, so that'll be coming next, but I'm not sure how I'm going to demo that one. But that's that, that, that that's the, that's that, that's the, our aim for over Christmas is to be able to work out a way that we can get this data into a hollow lens and just be able to spin it around, stick your head in, take measurements between it inside a, a fully immersive 3D environment. Okay, so that's a bit longer than what I expected, but that's the, the, the end of the presentation. So I'm just going to show some of that on the mobile, on the, on the live now. So if I... Okay. So what I'm doing here is actually uh, using TeamViewer to connect onto the, my mobile phone that's sitting next to me. It's a great, this is just one of those nice things that we can now do. So, so if you do have users out there who require support in the field, we can actually do this. We can just log into the, the device as they're out there and have a look what's going on. But it's, it's also great for doing presentations. So this is my actual phone sitting next to me. And we can see that very uh, uh, simple uh, simple scheme that we've got going on there. I just want to show you how easy it is to actually put a, put a couple of points in on lines in on this. So we're going to record a new manhole. Now normally you you do this with the GPS location, so you just say I want to record a manhole, and it would pull in the location, obviously using OSTM 15 and all the latest transformations and that. Uh, but we're going to override that and just say, I don't want it to be at that loc GPS location. I'm just going to put it down there. Okay, now it's blanked out the cover level now because I'll put that down with the pen, but I'll, I'll just put a cover level in. And then it will feed me through then the rest of this form. So it's quite a big form for the STC25. Uh, for the STC25 uh, manhole, but we, we get through it as quickly as we can do. So let's ask for all these parameters status. You can see wherever we can do, it's drop downs. Okay, so I filled in the main assets information, and now onto the cover section. Well, now feed me through all the cover questions. It's a square hinged. Yeah, where we have to ask for where we have to ask. I mean, those if you if you're surveying, you're always coming across uh, standard sized manholes that they can become selection lists as well.
That's the cover section completed. Go on to the shaft section. And the nice things that we, we like, that we spent a lot of time in Pimelo. We, we do have a lot of users who are absolutely uh, insistent that things take the least number of clicks possible. So, you know, one of the things that we do here is just it goes from question to question to question without you having to do unnecessary uh, unnecessary transitions between different screens and without overloading the user with a load of information that they can't. It's, it's very difficult to use this and, and it can be set up that uh, it's very difficult to use this and get it wrong. If, if the user, if the office user wants to set it up, that every question is mandatory and everything must be answered, then they can do that. Uh, I'll just I'm getting more than all them now. So I'll just take so I'll just go into my photo section just to show you how this works. So we've got our uh, location photo field and it says take your location photo. So I'm just gonna cheat here and Switch to a okay, so that's my location photo, and then I'll take an internal photo. And then just to show the uh, if you wanted to, you could uh, you can you can put some annotation on that. And you can see down there the stamping as well, the, the watermarking of the location. And then if you, if you wanted to, you could do a manual sketch. But you don't need to do that. Okay, so that's our manual recorded, and then to record a pipe, we just say one to a pipe, and it's going to be from there to there. You can see how easy that is. That you just the, 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 you can you can do that with your finger very very easily. Then up pops the pipe information. Uh, so you can see here that it's pulled in. The references, so it's been pulled in the upstream reference, and the upstream manhole references, and the upset levels. So the only thing it's asking me to actually complete is the is the depths. So if I put a depth in of 1.2, and then it will show me the calculation for the upstream level. And then the downstream. I, and like I say, you know, this can be done at different times. Uh, if you haven't got that information. If you haven't lifted the other pipe, then you can just do a partial one and just uh, undo your connection between one pipe, and then and then do the joining up once you've actually got the, the, the do the more of the joining up and fill in the other uh, the pipe depth once you've actually lifted that one and found out what that depth is as well. So I'm just going to copy. So I'm going to say that this pipe was the same as the previous one. So it's copied all the information. About this pipe and accept that one. And that's our pipe there. And then if we just move over into the portal, I am beginning to run out of time. So and we can see there that that, that that point is actually in the in the portal before I've even got there. I can now click on that one, review all the information, review my photos, review the sketch. And then uh, if I want to, it's not going to be the most interesting one, that one. 
Yeah, because it, it will generate the, the, the report for those ones. It will happen automatically once the user in the field device says, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish the job now. Then, then all the, the STC reports will finish. But if I go on to this one, I can manually click it and say, report, generate a report for editing in the job. And it will go through that, go through that job and generate a report for each one of them. It takes about 30 seconds for each report to do. But because I'm running a bit tight on time, I'm just going to leave that and just show you that the, the end result is that I can click on this download report. And out comes a Word document. With the completed, all the assets information about the, that we filled in about the manhole, all the pipe information for any incoming and outgoing pipes. We get the location photo. We get our little sketch showing everything coming in. And we get the photos embedded in there. Okay. Then on the point cloud side of it, if, if this was one of the ones that we'd stuck the GeoSwam down and we'd uh, recorded, recorded a point cloud, then we get an extra little button that we can click on, on and view the point cloud. And you can see how fast this is. You know, it, it's just over a normal connection. You can get really, really big point clouds in on this. And uh, and it, uh, anybody can anybody can use these point clouds. But uh, this is a little bit of a uh, fiddly operation, but, but things like I can, I can do height measurements. So the height from the surface to that bottom point, okay, so that's a 5.3 meter. There's your, your depth of your chamber straight away. Now, it, this is really, this is a very nice one though. You see, the problem with this one is I can't see, I can't see into it because of the, uh, uh, because of the surface. But what I can do on this is, Set up, set up a bit of clip boundary on that. And then I can clip the top of the surface off then. Move this arrow up and down. Clip off the top. Have a look inside. And then even, this is a nice bit as well, so I can pick that up and move it, slice it in so we can see exactly what's going on inside it. And then we want to take some measurements across there. Very, very easy to, there's no reason why anybody can use these point clouds now. And then just before, so as our time's running out now, I'm going to just, the, 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 these are all the download options that we have here. So that I mentioned before the CSV and the KML. Uh, there was a nice one that one of our customers on the KML side of things. And this, this is just straight out the portal, this with. It, it, it's really a, a leveraging off other people's good work. So the, 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 obviously this is mostly Google Earth that makes this look nice, but it does. it's a nice way to give your client a some data. So there's a little drainage survey that you've done. You've got some simple layer control there, so you can say, okay, I'm going to turn off the leaves. I've just left the manholes, click on the manholes. And it pops your, uh, your, all your attributes with your, uh, with your photos. But it's the, it's, it's when, when this, when this is done on a, Area where the Google put all the 3D stuff on. It's really cool. It's not the best styled uh, ML file that we, we, we can control. So you get different colored dots for manholes and gullies and make those the, the, the lines bigger. But it's, it's, 
it's great for giving a non-technical client a, a nice, easy way of being able to see what you, the work you've done. And then the last thing, which I've got ready to go, I think, was that same thing loaded into QJS. So there's, there's an export button from the portal that will generate that straight off. So you'll get your, your, your all your pipes and manholes and gullies all annotated with whatever you want to decide. You can play with your heart's content. It's a very, very easy interface to set up some complicated styling rules on that. And then you can put your title sheet on it. And you've got your, uh, your, your, your drawing deliverable to your customer you know, without any CAD experience at all. Okay, so I've taken a moment out of there. I want to finish a bit earlier so I can see if there's any questions. But if there's any questions on the chat window, then I'll try to answer them now. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat window. That may be may not. Uh, being able to use this properly, or it may just be that there's no questions. But okay, well, seeing as we just did the I think that's probably a decent place to stop. If you do have any questions or any thoughts, then it's. Richard, Gershwin, and Martin, or, or email, my details will be on this presentation. So if you email me or Richard, Gershwin, or Martin Palmer from Corrie, you know, they'll be able to help a lot out on prices and hardware combinations. Uh, and or if you've got any technical questions on integrating with other pieces of equipment that you may have, uh, then you know, almost certainly the question will be, the answer will be yes. But we, we please email me directly if you've got any and questions on the technical side of how do I get this data into a different system or will this link with my existing PS, then, uh, then, then I'll, I'll try to help out. Okay, so thank you for your time, everybody, and I hope that was useful.